Hi, folks. I'm Michaela Hunt with NewsLink for NowDecatur.com. And we have Dr. Bethany Gibson with us here from Decatur Memorial Hospital, who is an allergist and an immunologist, to talk about all the things that irritate us. And this is not an irritating conversation. Good. We're going to get enlightened. So tell me a little bit about fall allergies in this area. What are some of the things that we're dealing with in this area of the country? So classically in the fall, the worst allergies that people experience are from either the fall weeds or molds. We live in a culture rich with agriculture, and so the fall weeds actually grow with the crops. So we have quite a bit of uh, fall pollens that uh, people have to live with and also molds which also grow with the crops and also in the trees and the plants that we have in our yards. If I'm raking leaves, can I rake up some of these allergens? Certainly, and but you don't have to be raking leaves because the, the mold spores and the fall pollens fly through the air. They can fly hundreds of miles, so best thing to do is keep your windows closed during the fall if you think you have allergies. Kids are going back to school during this time of year and sometimes might show some symptoms. Why is that during that particular time right. of year? Fall is a hard time for kids as far as their allergies and asthma. A lot of it is they're just getting back with their friends and they're catching colds from each other. But also uh, at some schools they don't have air conditioning so the windows are open and the pollens are coming in and so maybe they're affected by their allergies. So parents need to put their kids back on their allergy medications when they go back to school. Allergies are so much more too than what we breathe in. We're talking about what we eat, things that we have day to day. So let's talk a little bit about that. What do food allergies traditionally look like? How do they show up for you? Well, the serious food allergies are mediated by an antibody. So they cause uh, sudden and severe symptoms such as what we all know about the peanut allergies yeah. and some of the other allergies. So suddenly a child eats, say, peanut butter maybe for the first or second time. They break out in hives, they may vomit, they may have trouble breathing. So those are severe allergies. A child should not eat peanuts after that if they are tested and are positive. Uh, and that is something we can easily test for. We have good validated tests for that. But what about the things that hurt my stomach, like yeah. that piece of bread that maybe I feel like right. I shouldn't have because I know how it makes sure. me feel? Sure. There's other foods that trigger certain things like migraines or some abdominal bloating and pain. Those are easier, those are, I'm sorry, those are harder to diagnose. Um, and they're not dangerous in the sense that they're not going to cause anaphylaxis and death. But sometimes you just have to eliminate those and see if you feel better, but maybe not totally eliminate, maybe just cut down on how much of that you eat. If people have questions, what do they need to do next about if they're having some of these irritations? Talk with their physician or if they think it's serious or need to see an allergist, certainly that would be an option. Okay, and you can book through a link that we have up here on the website. Just go to nowdecatur.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Gibson. You're welcome.